May the Lord be with you. A few announcements for us this morning. Um, Kids Club will be starting back up on September 10th. And I need someone to either help with either wreck and crack or for music. So if uh, anyone would uh, be willing to help out with that, I either need someone to help with some uh, wreck and craft and rotate every other week or to uh, help out with music. So uh, if you would, if you would you know, be interested or if you would know of anyone who would be interested, uh, please see me uh, sometime between now hopefully and the next week so we can make sure we get things set up because it will be starting back up on September 10th. Um, Tuesday we have music lessons in AA. Wednesday we have youth and Friday we have the farmer's market. Um, and starting on Sunday, November 7th, one minute, then you get And on Sunday, September 7th, we will be starting back up our Nance uh, nursery program. And uh, if you would, if there would be anyone that would be willing to help join in on that uh, rotation, so that we're probably only doing it, you know, one uh, every five weeks or so. So that way we can keep people in there. If there would be anyone that would be willing to be a part of that rotation. Uh, please see me or any of the ones that are on DVR, uh, Sharon, Cindy, Randall, Cindy, not this, this, uh, Al Ray back there, uh, who am I missing this morning that's on DVR? Joey. Pardon me? Joey. 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 Oh yeah, Joey's back there. She, she talked about like a kid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill and uh, Beth Brown. So if you see any of those, they're the ones that's heading up, making sure that we, uh, you know, let, let our community know that we care about them and their children. Yes, Cindy, you had to. Just wanted to let everybody know we will not be having the market this Friday, so our vendors can spend the holiday meeting. Okay. But we will be back in two weeks. Okay. So there is no farmer's market this week. No okay. farmer's market this week. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. Pastor, I have an announcement. Yes, ma'am. If anyone, anyone is interested, uh, the Molina Trinity Lutheran Church is having a bluegrass festival today. It's after their church, which was, they're planning on starting, I think, around 11. It's only going to last about an hour. They're serving free hot dogs and chips, for the lawn chair and blanket if you'd like. Okay. And that's Molina? Yeah, the Molina Lutheran. The Molina Lutheran Church. They're having a bluegrass and yeah, hot dogs yeah. Yeah. and... An afternoon of fun. So uh, if, if you uh, don't have anything that you're planning on doing after church this morning, that sounds like a good time. Would there be any other announcements this morning? Okay. Well, if not, I'll turn it over to Bill for birthdays and anniversaries.
Would we have joys or concerns that we'd like to share this morning or updates on the ones that are on the prayer list? Yes, sir. We can take Mason Hadley off the list. He's feeling much better and started running again. But I'd like to have some prayers for Vince Benson. He's on my cross country team. He's having some pretty serious health issues right now. And that was Vince Spence? Vince Benson. What was the first name you I'm sorry. Vince. Vince. Okay. He's one of my senior runners. He's had some major issues right now. We will keep him in our first. Would there be any others this morning? James is not here, but if he was, I'm sure he would share with you how joyful he is that his sisters are now both back in school. <laughs> <laughs> He likes being the only child in the yes, school year round, doesn't he? Yes, okay. he does. Excellent. Excellent. He doesn't like all the mothers at home. <laughs> <laughs> Would there be any other joys or concerns we'd like to share this morning? Yes, ma'am. safely to us. And we pray, Lord, for those who do not come home safely. 
For those who are injured, Lord, we ask for you to give your healing, both upon their body and their spirit, Lord. Help them to recover and help them to get back to normal lives with those who love them. And we pray, Lord, for those who do not come home. We ask, Lord, that you will pour your grace and your peace and your comfort out upon their families. That you will help them to know that they and their loved ones are in your hands. And that you are watching over and keeping them all. We thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in your Son, Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, if you would, let us uh, rise and sing our next hymn this morning, found on page 156. I love to tell the story.
his word and did for Sarah exactly as he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abram in his old age. This happened just at, this happened just at the time God said it would. And Abram named her son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abram circumcised him as God had commanded him. Abram was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. And Sarah declared, God has brought, as God has brought me laughter, all who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abram that Sarah would nurse the baby, that I have given Abram a son in his old age? Would the kids come forward for a moment at children's moments? And 
we know Joseph had special purposes, didn't we? Because he was raised up and became the second guy to Pharaoh, didn't he? Yep. I'm not going to say that all of you guys are going to be raised up to be the number two person in the land, okay? But God does have a purpose for each and every one of us. And that's why we were born. Let's have a word of prayer. Dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for our births, for our lives, and especially for our purposes, Lord. We ask, Lord, that as we go through life, that you do show us those ways that you have prepared for us. That you do help us, Lord, to listen to your voice and answer your call. And that you help us to do what you have before us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, God. If you would like to go back. Thank you. Our next scripture reading comes to us from the fifth chapter of 1 John, verses 6 through 12. And this is the testimony concerning the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Lord, bless these your holy words and we will hear them. Eternal life. Is that just for us? Is that just for our families? Is that just for those who come to church with us? Or would God really like to see everyone experience eternal life in His presence? I personally believe he'd like to see everyone experience eternal life in his presence. But that's not a reality. It would be nice if we would say, well, it doesn't matter what happens, everybody in the end gets Friday. Everybody's taken care of because, well, Jesus' is blood washed. It really doesn't matter what you do. Mankind's heart is evil. It is about evil all the time. That is said in Proverbs to us. How many times a day do we have to say to ourselves, wow, I wish I wasn't thinking that or feeling that. Ever do that? I know I do. And these are the things that show me that God's love is great. Because I know no matter how much I want to improve myself, I can't. The only good that I ever am is because God is doing something with me and in my life. It's an amazing thing. That's the only way that I do any good. We can try to do a lot of things, can't we? We can try to love, and it seems like in the middle of trying to love, something sets us off and we don't say things very loving. I know as I was coming in this morning, uh, Beth was here, and I'm hearing a couple, couple blocks away, some people yelling at each other. And I go, someone's not having a good morning this morning. And then my thoughts, after a few other thoughts, finally came around to, why didn't I just instantly go, God, please give them some peace? Yeah, I don't always remember those things. And it's only by the grace of God that I do start to remember some of those things. Eternal life. We all have it. Every one of us was created an immortal soul. We are not, not omnipotent. We are not omnipresent. We have no things that make us like God other than the fact that we are created in His image and out of His love. 
And he calls us to do one thing first, and that's to trust him. How often do we trust in our own strength? I don't have enough strength to lift that. Heck, I've almost injured Bill a time or two with my limited abilities of strength. Because you have Bill and I are stupid enough to pick up big rocks and things like that. He, he's wonderful. But in my own strength, I am weak. It is only through God's strength that I become strong. And it is only through faith that I grow. Our faith, as we saw last time, is what conquers the world. Not our beliefs. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. We can have all kinds of beliefs about God, can't we? Some of them will be right, some of them will be very wrong. One of those things that we believe about God is God will never give us more than we can take. Wrong answer, people. God will never give us more than He can take. All of our rest is to be in Him. All of our growth is to be in Him. All that we do is to be in Him. And He will see us through. Paul tells us to walk by faith, not by sight. In the middle of the night, how many of us turn the lights on? Whenever we wake up in the middle of the night and we want to walk through the house and go somewhere. Anybody? How many of us leave lights on so we can walk through the house at night? Then? No one? Okay. Come. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those things. At night, when you get out of bed, if you've got to go to the bathroom and you need a drink and you need something like that, and you don't turn the lights on, you have faith that you didn't leave anything in the floor or in the way, and that everything will be exactly where you put it, right? Because you just get up, you go to the bathroom and come back to bed, or you get up and you get a drink and you come back to bed. Half the time, my eyes don't even open. We're open very limitedly. That's someone walking by faith, that I think I can find my way around my home. We cannot walk around half asleep or with our eyes closed in the world, can we? Because it is not a place that we should be placing our faith in. It's just like if, you know, if every day when we go to work, how many of us can go into work after we get there with our eyes closed and just wander around the job? I hope nobody has a job that that's for. That, that is so boring and monotonous that everything could be done that way. I mean, we don't just go in and just do the same things. God actually calls us to walk by faith. Whenever we, whenever we share with Him our struggles, those struggles it will be better. They don't become perfect. Because nothing in this life is perfect, is it? Except for the love of Jesus Christ. That is it. And in this life, we will struggle. That is one of the things about God, and God's asking us to trust Him. In life, we know certain things will happen if we do certain things. Ben, if you hit your sister, what will happen to you? <laughs> there will be punishment coming, right? There's certain things we know will happen if we do something. There's certain things that we've got set in our minds that this is how things are and this is how things work. And we like knowing that security and that safety in, in that, though. We like knowing that there's order, that it's going to be the same way today as it was tomorrow. Or do we? Whenever we're feeling broken, we're pretty much focused on, well, it's going to be this way forever. Don't we? we start to think it's always going to be this way. But that's the great thing about God. He actually wants to fix us. He actually wants to heal our brain. He actually wants to do.
do something special for us, with us, and in our lives. We don't always realize it because of all the horrible things that happen in life. Where we feel that at work we are not appreciated, or we feel at work that it's just useless and meaningless. I hope you don't feel that your work is meaningless and useless. Because that does not help you be the child of God that God calls you to be. He created each and every one of us with a purpose, with His purposes in mind. We don't always think of that, do we? I think of my purposes. What I plan for this week. What I want to accomplish. What my dreams are. What my visions are. It's all Him or not. How often do we just trust in Him? The testimony that life is in His Son. And if we place our trust, our faith in Him, then it will be settled. Does anybody believe that if I were to decide to just flop down on the floor here, that I would pass through the floor? <laughs> No, none of us believe that would happen, do we? There's no reason to expect it to. Yet on some of the same cases, we don't do anything with God in our relationship with Him to help us grow in Him. How can we grow if we don't do things? So much of the time we think that, well, I'll get a little something somewhere. How many of us spend an hour with God reading His Word this week? How many of us spent two hours this week? Three hours this week? An hour each day? Would you be sad? Not even that much. How much of us do that? How much of us spend that time in prayer with Him? What of us done? One of the places I pray the most and this is because I no longer have children in my car most of the time, is when I'm driving. Because I've actually got some alone time, some quiet time, some time away from other things. Now don't pray with your eyes closed while you're driving. Okay? That is crazy. We don't have to just pray with our eyes closed, do we? The way people used to pray, 2,000 years ago, the Jewish people all prayed like this, with their eyes open and their hands out, asking for God to put in their hands His holy. Have we ever done that? Have we ever thought about that? His holy. Because let's face it, what's in our heart is evil. Remember the old uh, radio program, The Shadow? What evil works in the hearts of men, only the shadow knows? No, God knows. It's plain and simple. God knows. And sometimes we easily grieve Him. Way too easily do we grieve Him. Because we do not live in love. It's really all we're called to do. It's a hard thing sometimes, isn't it? We want things that, well, they prove it to me that this will be better for me. We like proof, don't we? We like it when science says something that resembles what's in the Bible instead of taking away from it. It's not about believing everything in this book and the right way of believing and the right doctrine, and the right dogma, and the right tradition. It's about being right here in our hearts with God. And the only way that can happen in us is whenever our faith, whenever our life is placed in His hand. We can't keep pulling it back from Him and say, well, I'll take care of this part of life. Because he really wants to be involved in every aspect of our life. Our emotional life. Our role. Our family life. Our time with our friends. And especially, guys, I hate to say it, the time we're out with our friends and the other guys. 
We don't always tend to think too much about God when we're out with Him, do we? I know I tend to think about sports and other things. But truly, God wants all of us. Not just the little pieces that we're willing to hand over every now and then for our own security in the afterlife. If God's purpose was just for us in the afterlife, He would have done away with all this stuff. Because all this stuff is the story of man trying to be in right relationship with God. Did we ever see Abraham water? The answer is yes. He lied about his wife being his sister. He lied about many things. Yet God still loved him. God still planned to use him to bless the entire world. We don't see where Abraham had many other a lot of faults. But we know that he was a liar and that he lacked faith. Because how many times did God have to tell him that you were actually going to have a child from Sarah? Over and over and over and over again. Sarah actually brought in the maid servant to get pregnant, to bear Ishmael. But God had other plans. And when, man, I hate it when I do that. Abraham's wife, Sarah, why? Okay. Yeah, don't, don't, don't you just love when you do that? Now, Sarah, she just couldn't buy it. You know? Marlene, God tells you tomorrow you're going to have a child in 40 years. <laughs> Same response Sarah made, wasn't it? We think that way because with us, we limit things. We limit God. We limit what can happen in this world and in this life because we don't believe God can really bless us, do we? We don't really believe that God loves us enough to forgive us and make us whole. He does. It's not going to be the snap, but well, the forgiveness is. But the making us whole takes traveling with him and with each other. Millie, you said it today. You thanked us for walking with you through the loss of her. What would that be without your faith, without your church family, without your family? It would be awful, isn't it? It's bad enough what life does to it to us as it is. And that's why God actually calls us to try to live a life of holiness in relationship with God. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. Because, well, let's face it. Um, how many people remember all the people that have hit you? Does anyone? We can remember some of them. But how many of us can remember all the people that have been? But how many of us can remember all the people that we felt have slighted us? It really didn't do anything to us other than not honor us. Other than not put us up on a pedestal. Other than didn't think of us first. That's what a slight is, isn't it? When we think someone didn't care about us. And those things continue to build and grow and grow and build, don't they? This is hard things to forget. Very hard. Did God slight us? No. God loves each and every one of us. No matter what we do, no matter where life takes us. But we have to trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. From time to time, I try to help the kids to be able to argue with teachers and things like that whenever they're given this argument or that argument about why 
Christianity is just sheer foolishness. You can't really believe that God created. Yes, yes, I can. And I can just trust. You really can't believe that God actually loves you enough that he would actually care about you and do something for you. Yes, yes, he does. And he did. We find it hard to believe that every time we trip up, every time we stumble, we find it hard to forgive ourselves, don't we? Because we knew that. God asks us to grow with Him so that we can grow in trying to do that. Because it is only through His strength, only yeah. through His power, only through His grace that we can move on and embrace that love that is Jesus Christ. Don't just believe in the miracles of Jesus. The miracles of Jesus were for a people that needed signs. Jesus tells Thomas, Blessed are those who believe who have not seen, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Plain and simple. Thomas had to see. He said he actually had the to touch. And then when Jesus was standing before him, he fell to his knees and said, Blessed are you, Son of God. Those who have Jesus have eternal life. And if you do not have Jesus, well, okay, you do still have eternal life. But it is not with God. It is not in His presence forevermore. It is shut off from Him in the outer darkness. For the Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because they are cut off from the fellowship of God. Let's trust you. Not that what he said was right. Not that the Bible and every word in it is perfect. That's something you got to take by faith. All those things. Not head belief, but by faith. That God is real and that he loves us. And that our lives are secure in his son because of what his son does for us. And it just takes faith. We don't always think of it that way. We are going to stumble. You see any of the disciples living a perfect life? You didn't, did you? Jesus shook his head all the time. He even said to him at times, Get thee behind me, say. You're taking away from the plan, from the purpose from the goal of what I came to do. He came to claim each and every one. Let us give ourselves to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. The one who knew our grief, bore our sin, conquered death, and sits at your right hand. We thank you, Lord, for him. Lord Jesus, help us to place our trust in you, not in the things that science proves, not in just the things that are written, but give us real experiences with you in our hearts so that we know that we are yours, so that we know that we are in, in your hands, so that we know that we are a part of you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. At this time, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
blessings that you pour out upon us. We ask, Lord, that you will take us, our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, Lord, and that you will pour your spirit out upon us and use us for your kingdom. That you will use these gifts to share your love with others. That you will allow others to know you and our joy in theirs to be complete in you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. If you would, let us turn in our hymn books to page 130 for our closing hymn this morning. God will take care of you. <laughs> Son and Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you now and for all your days.